Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how I installed a geothermal unit, added it onto my existing propane furnace, and I did this all for less than $800. Here's how I did it. So it all started when I was looking on Craigslist for a geothermal unit. I was lucky enough to find this one, new, never even used for less than $500 and it's a two and a half ton which is just about the right size for my 2,000 square foot home. A geothermal unit takes advantage of the refrigeration cycle in the same way that a refrigerator or an air conditioner does. It simply moves heat from one location to another. So your refrigerator moves heat from your refrigerator to your kitchen to keep the food inside cool. Your air conditioning system will move heat from your house to the outside air to keep your house cool. I've drawn this diagram to demonstrate roughly how your air conditioning system works when it's about 90 degrees outside. Your house will warm up, in this case I've shown it warmed up to 85 degrees. We cool the refrigerant inside your house in that coil such that when you blow the inside air over it, the air temperature drops from 85 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So we take that heat using the refrigerant along those refrigerant lines, throw it to the outdoor coil, and we blow the 90 degree air over a warm coil which warms up that air even more to 100 degrees. I don't want to go into too much depth on how the refrigeration cycle works. There's lots of other information online. Fancy air conditioning systems can actually run in the reverse cycle the way a geothermal unit does to move heat from the outside air to your house to heat your house when it's cold outside in the winter. This is called a heat pump. A geothermal unit functions exactly the same except it uses groundwater as it's medium to exchange heat instead of the outside air. Water has a higher thermal density which makes it much more efficient. Furthermore, the water temperature is very constant year round. Here in Ohio, my groundwater temperature is about 55 degrees. It's a lot easier for a heating system to pull heat from 55 degree water than to try and pull heat from zero degree air when it's really cold outside. This is a huge advantage for geothermal over a air sourced heat pump. Let's open up the unit and see what we have going on inside. The heart of the operation is obviously the refrigerant compressor which pumps the refrigerant around through all of the heat exchangers and all the other ancillary control hardware. Behind the compressor you can see a little bit of the refrigerant to water exchanger. It's a coaxial coil exchanger. If we move around here to the other side you can see the other half of that exchanger and probably see more of it. It's the black piece that's curled up like a tube. You can see before the copper line coils up, it comes here to the water out port and the other end goes to the bottom where the water comes in. The refrigerant to air exchanger on the other side is the part which actually heats or cools the air of your home. That's the part where the return air comes through. I can show it here. You can actually see the exchanger obviously because it's closed up, but it just looks like a regular radiator. And now on to the actual installation. Let's first talk about electrical considerations. The unit calls for 265 volts with a minimum of 239 volts. I checked the voltage on my house supply and it was about 250 volts. So if your voltage supply to your house is below the spec of 240, you may need a buck boost transformer. The geothermal unit is connected to the thermostat the same way you would any other dual fuel heat pump. I'm not going to go into any details on how I did the duct work. Basically I just added the unit in between my return and my furnace. Originally the return was aligned along the axis of the geothermal unit so I had to turn it 90 degrees so the return air uh, comes from the top left of this picture and makes a 90 degree turn inside the geothermal unit. It took a little bit of work but it really wasn't too bad. Mostly menial cutting of metal and taping gaps. Maybe the most interesting part of the installation was the water system. We begin by looking where the water comes in from my well. I have a shallow well pump which is actually in my basement and not in the well itself because our water table is only 30 feet or so. The water bypasses the water softener system, runs up along the bottom of the floor joist. I installed a shutoff valve here just upstream of the sediment water filter. This is to keep any sediment from backing up inside the coaxial coil of the geothermal system. Our water is fairly hard. I'm not sure how long our coaxial heat exchanger will last. That'll probably be the first thing to go in this system. 
To control the flow rate of the water, I have here a water pressure reducing valve. These are usually used in homes in town where the pressure from the water tower is reduced to a suitable pressure for your home water system. The threaded bolt adjusts the area of water flow, thereby increasing or decreasing the water pressure and the water flow rate. I started with it wide open and decreased it until you didn't notice from a water faucet upstairs when the geothermal unit kicked on. And from there the water goes into the geothermal unit. Just downstream of the unit I've installed a water valve. This is made by Orbit. It's typically used for water sprinkler systems, but the geothermal unit controls it from its logic board, opens and closes the valve whenever the unit is turned on and off. That way your water doesn't run all the time. And from there the water continues on to the outlet. This is the same place where my sump pump dumps to. It goes down across the road into a creek. Hopefully this video was helpful for you, either to give you a better understanding of how a geothermal unit works and maybe help you install one yourself on the cheap. Thanks for watching.